Uh, carb cycling, uh, diet, uh, fat loss strategy explained. I, I, I want to go, I've had so many people ask me about the diet I did for my show and how it works. And I worked with Justin Harris from Troponin Nutrition and, uh, he uses a carb cycling approach, which, you know, I was loosely familiar with before I worked with him, which is why I chose him, uh, to help me with my diet because I, made logical sense to me how the diet worked um and i needed somebody to you know help keep me accountable and whatnot but anyway we work together I, i've learned a great deal from him i've done my own research as well um and i wanted to share with people just kind of at a high level how carb cycling works for fat loss um you know ho ho hopefully this will help give you just a general overview of how carb cycling um, works. Um, anyway, the picture here on the first page is, <laughs> this is crazy. This was me eight weeks before my show and six weeks after the exact same body weight. So if you have any doubts about how it works, um, you can see the complete body composition transformation here. Um, um, so the very first thing that's important to understand that with carb cycling is calories in calories out and thermodynamics um the human body is a closed thermodynamic system uh you <laughs> you can't violate the fundamental laws of physics so it is calories in calories out as much as you want to believe that it's not um it is and you have to be at a deficit to burn fat um it, it is a must, a required. You can't burn fat any other way. Um, now you can create that deficit in a multitude of ways. You know, through doing cardio, um, fat burners, um, cutting calories. Uh, you know, there, 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 there's a multitude of ways to do it. Um, for more detail, I have a a, a, a video where I go into great length about how thermodynamics works and calories in calories out I, I suggest watching that before watching this if you haven't done so yet um so carb cycling for fat burning the the high level concept of it uh the way we ran it we had low medium and high days uh, uh the low and medium days during the fat burning phase were at a um, hypocaloric they were at a deficit uh, and they are intended for fat burning. Um, you know, in my experience, I, I felt like the the first initial days I was dipping into glycogen, and then towards the end of the, you know, we would do six fat burning days and then a high day. So I felt like the first few days I was mostly burning off gly glycogen, and then it was noticeable fat burning after the um, second half um, of the week. Uh, medium days are typically training days, okay? Um, days that you're lifting weights and you have slightly more carbs to help fuel the weight training. Um, low days, the carbs are lower. Towards the end of my diet, we actually had um, zero carb days on low days, but those are off days. You don't need the carbs if you're not doing anything. Um, if you're sitting around on your ass, it's a rest day. You don't need carbs, okay? You just don't. Um, it, it basically ends up being a wash if you factor in the amount of calories you probably burn during weight training um at least by my math it is uh you know it's hard to say how much how many calories you actually burn during weight training but you know i look at my apple watch and it gives me an idea i don't know how accurate that is but uh you know anyway there it, it winds up being a net neutral i, I believe uh the high day um uh, you know, we were doing one high day a week. Towards the end, we were adding more. We were having a couple because uh, my metabolism just caught fire. But high days are for refilling uh, glycogen and boosting your metabolism. Um, training days, they're on training days only. Typically, leg days, you want to do it on a heavy lifting day. Um, you don't want to do it on arms or something like that. Probably, probably leg or back would be ideal day to do it. Um, or if you have a weak body part you want to bring up when you're doing off-season training, that would be a good day too. Um, we did once every seven days for the most part. Towards the end, like I said, we were doing a couple days a week sometimes. Um, the high day detailed how it works. 
the okay so you gotta understand the body on the stores excess carbs as either fat or muscle and liver glycogen okay um, you want to take advantage of that day by pushing the excess carbs into glycogen stores okay um, this fills your muscles out gives you energy to train makes you look fuller spikes your metabolism um, you know it you know Justin said that a, a large bodybuilder can store anywhere between a thousand and fifteen hundred grams of carbs as glycogen if fully depleted that, that's insane when you think about it uh, this doesn't violate you know so if when you're eating these excess calories from carbs you would think well this how does this not violate thermodynamics in you know you're not you're not you're not gaining fat on these days when you're pushing these carbs into the uh, glycogen stores but how, how does this not violate thermodynamics simple the, car, the calories aren't going away they're just being stored as muscle glycogen okay they're still there thermodynamics hasn't been violated um, another nice benefit of this is it prevents diet fatigue um, you know I was never at a point where I felt like I couldn't make it I only had to make it a couple more days to get to that high day and have some food and feel better uh, protein is kept lower on the high days uh, because carb, a high carb insulin, high insulin state is muscle sparing. Uh, fats are kept as close to zero as possible because your body's um, in, in a high insulin state. There's only one place fat can be stored, and that's in fat stores, okay? So we don't want that. So we keep the fat as close to zero as possible. Um, insulin can be leveraged to store carbs if you're if you're a big bodybuilder and you're eating 1,000, 1,500 grams of carbs, you probably can't shuttle all those carbs into the muscle without insulin. Um, a, a, a sample of a basic carb cycling diet. Okay, so let, let's just take basic carb cycling diet. Uh, let's just say this bodybuilder A their base metabolic rate is 3,000 calories, okay? This, you ran six days at a deficit of 1,000 calories. That deficit can be created through cutting calories from the diet, doing cardio, fat burners, whatever. Um, this should be almost two pounds of weight loss during the course of a week, close to it. Um, during this time, your body's going to burn through most of its glycogen, and you're, by day six, you're going to be pretty well glycogen depleted. Um, high day on day seven, let's say you're at a 1,000 calorie surplus, you go up to 4,000 calories instead of eating 2,000 calories. It's a huge swing, um, and you are eating 1,000 grams of carbs. I'm just using this as an example. Those carbs if we've done everything properly, will be stored mostly as glycogen and not as fat, which is crazy, right? Um, it, it, it's a cool trick of the body and keep you full and keep you looking good as a bodybuilder, which is what we want. We want full muscles. We want to burn fat. We don't want to burn muscle tissue. My experience, my personal experience, uh, the high days kept me sane. I've done other diets before. Keto comes to mind. I absolutely lost my fucking mind when I did keto. I could not sustain it. I, 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 f I just couldn't think. I felt like I was going to die. I, I, wanted, I started having crazy carb cravings, and I think that's the case with most people. And then they just end up binging, which is what happened to me. You just end up binging. You, you, you can't sustain it. You end up bin binging. I always knew I only had to make it a few more days before I could eat Captain Crunch and gummies and pie filling. I, I get to have fun things like that and lose body fat. I got down to single digit body fat while eating Captain Crunch and gummy bears and pie filling and whatever, you know, shit, fruit juice and shit like that. You wouldn't normally think that you you could eat on a diet, which, which is crazy cool. Um, 
the, the one thing that was wild too is my weight loss actually accelerated as I got further into the diet. We had to add calories back in. Um, my weight, my metabolism had just caught fire so much. Um, you, if you look at the top right of the screen, you can see my weight loss chart uh, up there. You can see the peaks and valleys. So the 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 days where you see the peaks are the days after I did a high day. And then you can see my metabolism accelerated again right afterwards. Usually what I found is by the time I reached day five, day six, my weight loss started to slow down. And then I would have the, the high day. And then things would just catch fire again right after that. You know, I, I my, my metabolism would kick right back off. Um, to be honest with you, I probably could have eaten more than I did. We, we <laughs> probably, I lost too much weight towards the end, and we probably could have had more food in there than we did. Uh, um, I probably could have gotten away with two high days a week, although we did add extra high days towards the end. Um, and then, you know, you can see the, the picture down on the right. I had it at the beginning. We talked about it. Uh, the amazing transformation in body composition. The, the picture on the left was pre-contest, I think six or eight weeks pre-contest. The one on the right is six to eight, six weeks, I think, post-contest. I'm the exact same weight in these two pictures, like 220, 225, the exact same weight. Which is crazy, right? <laughs> that, that is a completely different body composition. Um, and and it was from the diet. Now, I will say this. You can't deviate. You got to weigh and measure everything. Accuracy is very important. It's not going to work if you're just eyeballing shit or if you're having a cheat meal, unscheduled cheat meal here and there. You're not going to get the results out of it. You have to follow the diet. You have to weigh and measure everything. You have to be meticulous with it. That is a mandatory requirement. Um, thank you for watching my video. Hopefully this answered some questions. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, feel free to ask questions in the comments section if you have them. If there are other videos you would like me to make, let me know. I'm happy to do so. And follow me on Instagram at Paul K. Barnett. Thank you.